the church, my family uh, from Southern Alabama. This is a picture of the church where a white slave owning family owned my ancestors. These are not the tombstones of my family members. These are the tombstones of that family. The, the, the largest slave owner in American history was a guy named Joshua John Ward. That's where our family got our last name. And it's a reminder to me that the problem and the history, the unresolved issue in America is that this family that would go to church had slaves and would have perhaps beat those slaves and use the Willie Lynch letters to victimize those slaves. You put your name on your property, you put your name on your luggage, you put your name on your slaves. And so every time I sign my last name, it's a reminder that my family was in slavery. But you know what? God sent his son to shed his blood on the cross of Calvary to transform me from being a victim to being zero victim. And now I can look at every one of these tombstones and their descendants and speak the love of God over them. They don't owe me a thing because Christ has made me free. And I am not a victim. Woo! They don't owe me anything. I don't know who the grand dragon of the Ku Klux Klan is, but I love him because the love of God in me for him is greater than his hatred toward me. That's the power of the love of God and zero victim thinking. It's the power of God's love. These are the things that we have to restore to society. Dr. King, I like to say, had a dream, but we have a vision. America needs a new movement. America needs a zero victim movement to be spiritually awakened and not culturally woke. Amen. We need spiritual awakening in our society during this time. First Timothy chapter four, verse one says, now the Holy Spirit tells us in the last days clearly that some are going to turn away from the true faith. They're going to follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. We're seeing that in our society today. This is exactly what we're seeing. Demonic influence, bringing deception, bringing victim thinking into humanity to divide our nation. What is victim thinking? I say that victim mentality is a perceived or conditioned mental tendency to regard yourself as a victim of the negative thoughts, words, or actions of others. Victim thinking is learned. Every one of us in life have been victimized and have suffered from victim thinking. I say that victim thinkers are losers because victim thinking produces an I lose frame of reference and catabolic or toxic energy usually accompanied by depression, low morale, fear, offense, or unforgiveness. That is the fruit of victim thinking that we see in the lives of so many people. Victim thinking divides people and destroys potential, relationships, families, organizations, churches have split. It destroys societies and it robs us of our most valuable resource in life, which is time. I often say that we don't need critical race theory. We need critical race theology. And critical race theology is this. Folks, we have a sin problem and not a skin problem. And the love of God covers a multitude of sins. We need, that's critical race theology. And I'm reminded of 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 5 or so. Paul writes that love keeps no record of wrong done to it. We need a movement of zero victim thinking and a movement of God's love in our society. I often say that Jesus is God's prototype for humanity and our example of not being a victim. And here's why. The only man, the only innocent man that ever lived was Jesus Christ. And he suffered the greatest injustice that the world has ever known of being crucified for the sins of other people. There's no greater injustice. But while still being victimized and the nails are still being driven into his hands, Jesus is already praying Father, forgive them. He's already releasing the love of God by the power of God over the victimization. He was sacrificially dying for the Roman soldiers that was murdering him. That's the power of love and a zero victim thinker. And we are called to be ambassadors for Christ and to let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Victim thinking works like a set of clouds. It's all about perspective and altitude. I fly quite a bit. When you're under the clouds, it's dark. When you're in the cloud, it gets even darker. But eventually, as you gain altitude, you break through the clouds. And folks, there has never been a cloudy day in the history of the world. 
the perception of being a victim means your thinking is too low and you need to continue to rise above the injustice that you're facing. Attitude of heart determines altitude in life. Zero victim thinkers keep going higher and higher in life. I simply want to explain this idea to you. Viktor Frankl, one of my favorite authors, writes in Man's Search for Meaning that there is a space that anytime we have a stimulus of victimization, we have to create a space. And after that space, I say that victim thinkers react by reflex, but zero victim thinkers respond by reason. We need that mindset in America today. We must all move from victim to victorious through faith in Jesus Christ. Here's a verse of scripture to leave with you before I end. First Peter chapter four, verse eight, it says, above all things have intense and unfailing love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins, forgives and disregards the offenses of others. Practice hospitality to one another. Those of the household of faith, be hospitable, be a lover of strangers with brotherly affection for the unknown guests, the foreigners, the poor, and all others who come your way who are of Christ's body, and in each instance, do it ungrudgingly, cordially, and graciously without complaining as a representative of him. I want to speak the blessing of God over you before we go today and pray that this zero victim movement, the mind of Christ, will continue to expand in our nation. Please do stop by, get a copy of the book, help us spread the message. Before I go, I simply want to say to you, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace in Jesus' name. Bless Amen. you all. Love you all. Thank you so much.